All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Jen. <laughs> I use they, them pronouns. I'm here with Matt, who is a therapist who uses any pronouns. And we are here to continue the Ask a Queer Therapist series. Um, so Matt, um, something that we you know, we're talking about discussing is how do the pieces of mental health, queerness, race, and advocacy all kind of work together in someone's life or maybe don't work together so well sometimes? Um, that's a big question. <laughs> I think they all work and they all don't work. I think they're, they're contradictory and um, often conflicting uh, and have conflicting objectives. So let's look at it as a queer identifying person who is a mental health professional, regardless of my identities, my role is to help us slow it, slow the process down and figure out what's there. Let's explore. And as an advocate, right? Get out the way, move out the way, and get the, get the people where they need, right? Mm. And then, um, so those two pieces, right, in and of itself, are already are dialectical. They pulling each other at each other. You add the piece around my, my socialization around being cisgender. You add, add add on the piece of me identifying and presenting as a masculine identifying person, a person of color. All these things have shaped my worldview. Mm. So I can't help but bring those things into, into the spaces that where I serve my clients, which can be a great thing, right? Mm. And knowing <laughs> that all those things are influencing where I'm, how I'm presenting and being there for my clients. So you add a client who have some of those, some, none, or probably even touching on many of those identities. Because we're not monolithic in our thinking, it's really the idea of like what lens and what hat am I wearing when I'm with that client? Mm. So good example, anxiety, it's a good anxiety. Anxiety looks is real, it's definite, it's, it's not awesome, but we need it, right, to keep us alive at the fundamental level. We need the anxiety to keep us alive, yay, living. <laughs> and, but when it's not those actual, let me rephrase that, when it's threats are not life-threatening, right? And I said, they're not life-threatening. Let's slow that down. And so like me trying to slow it down can look like it can be, it can present. And if I'm not doing my job right, dismissive, right? Mm. Like it's Anxiety. not that big a deal. <laughs> yes, right? Or slowing the process down to give you, to help you work with you, to give you the tools to manage these big emotions and feelings by yourself mm. or managing pieces around identity. So knowing how I present a cisgender queer male, right, working with a client who might not have my identities, right, is helping us as asking a question, what's going on, right? Social advocacy, why, like, man, I can tell out the way as a therapist, and therapist, man, it's like, I want to slow it down because I want to slow everything down for everybody, right? I want to give us a place to reflect and have a question in this space, so I want you to reflect. I want you to be informed. I'm not saying that people are not informed when they come to my space, but my, my goal is you came to me and I want to honor you enough and respect you enough to just, just breathe. Mm -hmm. And is there anything else there? This is true. And what else is true for you in, as well in this space? Wow. And I find that's the hardest space to live in because as a therapist, I want to be asking more questions. I want to be curious. I want to I love you and care for you. And as a community member, I'm like, oh my God, I hate therapists who slow this. <laughs> like, you know, this is like, you know, this person's way. They know what they need. Um, and but that's different. And so it's different if uh, if I had a person who's like an adult and versus a person who's a younger person who's not um of legal age, right? The aspects are the same, but like. It's different, right? That's when I want to slow it. I want to slow the process down to ask some questions. Yeah. And so, like, I was trying to juggle that piece of, am I being a community member? Am I being an advocate? Or am I being a mental health professional? Mm. Yeah. And I do wear all three of those hats. But then going back to the trauma-informed lens of, like, I'm be transparent, right? I want to provide you what you need. And... I also want to make sure that I'm not providing too much information, nor do I want to not get in your way, right? If we have a divergent point of view. Yeah. 
Um, so I'm hearing that there's like urgency around the change pieces, of course, but then there's also the component of, you know, being able to be okay as much as possible in the meantime. So do you, how do you see those fitting together in terms of like when folks, you know, with the anxiety example, like when folks can handle anxiety better and like challenge some of the less useful thoughts and like that kind of thing, does that then create more space for change and advocacy or do you still see them as more opposed? So like when people are able to like do more processing and like, oh, this is not healthy for me, right? Mm -hmm. me having my boss ask me to come in for meetings, it's not life-threatening. Like, it's not life-threatening. It's like, it's, it's anxiety-provoking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all, the, all things being fair, right? Um, yeah, so you said, does that create more capacity for advocacy, like, with my client? Mm-hmm. I think it always I'm going to have create more advocacy, advocacy, but I think the ability for the client to take hold of their mental health and really own it, and that, I think that does... Put me less in the put me puts me way back. I'm just now a passenger, right? I'm always going to be a passenger, but I'm a weird in the beginning. It might be I'm your sidekick. I'm on the left. You're driving, but I'm gonna suggest let's go to the left. Left. All right, we're going to the right. We're gonna process through that whole process, and we get oh man, we should have made the left. It's okay. We're here. We're gonna make that left now. So I think as you're t- able, to, not able, as you are coming to your ability to like manage those big pieces and processing on your own, which that means you have the skills, you don't need me anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna be a sounding board. And really um, all at that point I'm doing is advocating for you to keep keep true to the things that you said that you wanted, right? Mm -hmm. And so that advocacy piece does change, right? Um, And so I think also the advocacy piece is like, I can support all these things and I can support, like, how do you want your documents to look like? What do you want me? How do you want me to doc? Like, I spend a lot of time, like, how do you want to refer to you when I document you? So I'm going to document you, right? Because I want to keep things legit, right? Because mm-hmm. I want to keep a job. <laughs> but do I use they, them? Do I use she, her? Do I use um, he, him, all the above? Do you even care, right? And that's and literally has have had a, that whole session around that. And so, like, and that can change. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's where, like, the report piece can build. So if there's a moment like, can we pause for this one moment? Let's just breathe and figure out what's going on. I think in theory, my hope is that we are build a report where like, I care about you, just want you to pause for a minute. Mm-hmm. Not telling you not to go after your goals. Was like, how do I assist you and what's the best role for me to assist, right? Yeah. And so, I hope that made sense. I know it kind of went all over the place. No, it totally made sense. And I think it's really, I mean, as someone who's like, hopefully working towards working in the mental health field, but also like who has a therapist, like it's really interesting to hear from your perspective, what it feels like to wear all those different hats at the same time and to feel pulled in maybe some different directions. Well, yeah. I, and I think too, um, it's not easier. But like, if I didn't have, if I wasn't a community member, I think it's a privilege actually to not be of the community, to be truly objective, which can come across as dismissive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, objective, like we're not Frazier, right? <laughs> <laughs> Stop pretending to be a therapist and be a therapist with me, right? But I think no one's doing that level of like psychodynamic work. Well, no, most people that we go to therapists are not doing that level of like, I am a blank slate. You don't know anything about me. You know that really doesn't work with people in crisis, like some minimal level. Of display. Yes, I'm a queer person. And that's great. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that for a moment. Of course. Yeah. yeah we're <laughs> constantly self disclosing whether we mean to or not. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're human. Right. <laughs> um, and so I think, I think, um, it's just important to really do my work more so than not, like, especially if I'm doing a dual relationship. Mm. Cause like, yes, you want to avoid dual relationships, but just because I, the idea is like, yes, I am not going to go to your school. I'm not with you, 
but we might show up the same advocacy pieces, right? Places. We're going to probably show up the same protests at some point. We're going to show up some community member uh, meetings or whatever at some point. So how do I balance those things? Whereas like advocacy wise, yes, but in this space, I know you more than the, what you presented outside this space. So like yeah. I owe you and I respect you enough to like just slow that down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's hard. Um, and like, and the hard part is like the hardest part that happened. A uh, real example: a person who needed something, um, and we had the conversation. Like, I can provide you what you needed, but I don't have information. That's what's going to I could, I could say. I don't know the truth. And and in, in in the end, it can won't provide you what you need, and it can also have. Now, there's a therapist who says X, Y, Z. So let's have that conversation, and if it's not what you want which I don't think that's what you wanted, we can, I can provide that. But I was, I was so like we went back and forth for a couple of sessions and came to a place where like they were able to give me more information and like I was able to provide what they needed. And so like, that's all I really wanted is a conversation. Like I trust you, but I cannot give you something that I don't know. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's where part where like, I want to give it to you. And the advocacy, when I was more of an advocate before I came into this space, I was like, Therapists are stupid. Why does this do this X, Y, and Z? Why are, they, why are they in the way? Why are they being the mm-hmm. gatekeepers? And like, I still believe that, but I can see it from the other's point of view. Like now that I'm trying to gatekeeper, gatekeeping, it's like, are you informed? That's all I want. Mm-hmm. And I got you. Once you're informed, do what you do, you boo. You're not hurting yourself and hurting anybody else. And it's a win. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> let's still celebrate you. <laughs> like, Absolutely. Uh, sorry. So that's all. It's a hard space to be in, and I love it. When is when I'm most worried is when like it feels too easy. Like I'm missing something. I'm probably missing something, or I am not being inclusive of all the pieces, or I don't have all the information. Like when I'm struggling, I think I figure out that's the best space to be in because I'm grappling with all your truths yeah. and all that I bring to the space, and I don't want that weight. So like it should be heavy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's, that is so much to think about. I love the description of juggling all of these truths at once. And yeah, I guess I'll wrap us up here. Um, but I so appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing that with me. Thank you. And I, I'm and for all those out there, I appreciate it. Thank you for listening. <laughs> I hope that was on probably was confusing. Um, and if you have a good therapist, they're struggling with all these, regardless of their identities, there, was, there should be, no, they're struggling somewhat in a healthy way. They're like grappling those pieces because you have another human life in front of you. Yeah, so true. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you. <laughs>